That looks like uh, we're up and running. Full screen, all good. All right, so this uh, video is uh, gonna be an attempt to help early algebra students visualize functions more easily. Uh, I haven't done this before, but I hope it makes some sense when, I'm, when it's all set and done. Um, gonna try to slow the brain down so you can work faster, okay? Uh, this is all because Yasser has talked about working quickly, so you got me thinking. So we're going to try to find friendly numbers to help us. And certainly Rene Descartes made the big breakthrough for visualizations. Uh, and I don't want anybody to confuse Rene Descartes with Rene Descartes, which is how I move my computer around the room. Okay, so if I say that, I don't want any confusion. All right, so let's have at it. Let's uh, slow the brain down so we can work faster. Let's start with X, something, Arabic. Letter X means the word something in Arabic is what I've learned from NPR. Hope they're right. I think they are. Mm -hmm. This is in my way, so let's move it out of the way. All right, so we're working with changes when we pick an X value. Uh, like four, pick an X value of four. I said five here, but I'm changing up already. So let's say X is four. We get a feeling for quantity because we have zero as a frame of reference and we're used to doing that. It's counting numbers and, okay, so we start with something. All right. Well, what if we want to, you know, and that measures change from zero, but what if we want to measure change from four? Well, I mean, this Descartes gave us, you know, one of his axes, he called the x-axis, which is where we start with numbers and we get a feeling for that initial four-way, four-ray into doing some calculations. But what if we want to measure from four? Well, I don't think it's the x-axis anymore. Let's remove Rene down a little bit. Okay, uh, so we're gonna give this measuring stick a new name and I think we can call it x minus four. Come back here, all I'm doing is taking four units away. Okay. Now, if I wanna measure something, if I give you a new number like six, I think you're probably gonna say, we've changed by two units. We've changed by two units. But what if I wanna square that and show it? Well, then we changed by four. But if I put a 10 here, or an eight, sorry, changing by four, it's optically difficult to follow what I'm saying. So Rene, thank you, Rene, gave us a new ruler on the other side, which measures outputs, right? So we can measure those outputs. And in this case, if I square that change, I'm going up four units. Well, what if I wanted to cut that in half? Well, I, just have to, I couldn't show four units of change. I'd have to show two. And what if I added one? Well, I think I'd be at three. And what did we start with? We started a six, and we ended up with a three, and that's plotting. I could have picked a different number. I could have picked 10. Let's do the same things. Let's do exactly the same things here. I think the first thing I did was figured out how far 10 is from four. I think it's six units. I think we should square that. Well, that gives me 36 units of change. I don't know if I'm drawing to scale here or not. So I'm just going to represent it with that amount, a little bar graph. Then we cut it in half. Well, that's 18 units. And then I add one, I'm at 19. So six, three, remember we've got a, a ruler over here, right? And um, let's call that zero. Let's call this three. And let's call this now 18, but we added one. So we're really at 19 units right there. We started with the number 10 and we got 19 units. It's not drawn quite where I want it, it kind of looks linear. So let's move it up here. 
So 10, I'm drawing better to scale. 10 gets me 19 units. Well, I think starting to see the right-hand branch of a parabola. I hope we maybe see that. And if I had picked four, I think I would have been zero. And I think I could have replicated, you know, four units to change backwards, cut in half, adding one. It's going to get us that as well. Wasn't planning on showing this side, but let's write down what we did. We started with a number, four. Randomly picked a number, four. It was four units from zero, but we decided to subtract four. Nothing there now. Then we decided to square that number. Yeah. And then we decided to cut it in half and add one. I think if we put 10 in, we can see the 36 units of change that I drew a minute ago. We cut it in half, 18. We add one. Now, let's look at this number here. Let's look at one half. When I put six in, six minus four is two. Two squared is actually four units, which is what we got. But four plus one isn't three, so that four didn't work. No. What worked? Two plus one gets me three. Let's start with x minus four again, squared, but let's throw 10 in. 10 minus four, six. What did we do? We squared it, which gets us 36. 36 is not 19, so we get rid of it. What takes me halfway to 36 units of change? 18 units of change. And then we add one, and we're at 19. Just another perspective. We didn't have to square. We could have square rooted. I'm trying to pick friendly numbers. I might have to change this one. Let's try to square root what we did. See what that looks like. But instead of 10, take away four, six units. Hmm. How about we try eight? And how instead of six minus four being two, why don't we try five? Let's do the same thing. We start with a number x, it's four. We shorten our axis, which means we're really taking away four units. And so now the measuring of change happens in the parentheses. And if I change by one unit, and I square root, which is just like a parentheses, I drop a five and I get one. What if I don't want one? What if I want three? If I don't want one, what if I want three? Well, first off, I started with one unit. Now it's three times that. Now I'm showing three this way. Okay. And what if I take away one this time? Well, I'm at two. So we started, but I'm starting with the number five. And I end up with two units of change, which I measure this way with a different ruler. Here's my outputs. And I can see that if I start with five, I've got a calculation that gives me two. All right, well, what happens if I put an eight in? Eight minus four is four, and the square root of four is two units of change. But I'm gonna do what with it? I'm gonna triple it. So those two units all of a sudden become six units of change. Six units of change, and if I subtract one, it looks like I'm at five. So we started with a six, and I got a five. I'm sorry, eight. Now, you can tell I haven't reversed this. This is on the fly. So eight minus four, square root of four, two. I don't want two units of change. I want three times that, six. Isn't that what we did? We started with two, but then we had six, and then we take away one, we get five. Get rid of the change you don't want, bring in the change you do. What would the next friendly number be? Well, some square root. We did the square root of four. We did the square root of one. How about the square root of nine? Where would I be on the axes? Four plus nine, I'd be at 13. 
So I throw 13 in, 13 minus four, it's three units of change. I don't want three units of change. I want three times that, nine. Right? And so that should give me, if I'm putting 13 in, a cancellation and nine minus one is eight. So 13 gives me eight. Okay, if that's five, maybe eight's here, somewhere in here, 13 gives me eight. And I can kind of see a trajectory happening. And I don't think I'm going to pick numbers less than four. Rene Descartes, I don't think he had a complex plane. I think we're dealing with real numbers. and Not that imaginaries aren't real, but they have, you know, we, we compute with them, so they're real. Just another tool of computation. But they're called imaginaries, and, and on Descartes' x, y axis, we just don't show square roots and negatives there. So, um, what little closer examination shows that, okay, um, this is a change in y, and this is a what? What is it? Well, let's find out. We put 8 in, 8 minus 4, square root of 4, 2. Well, I could have called that the square root of 4. Right? And what happens when I put... Uh, 13 and 13 minus 4. Uh, well, of course, I'd have to change this, right? I was tripling. So that would have been the 6. All right? And the next one, we would have gone up. Uh, well, let's get rid of this right now. Let's just go back to this step. So we're not subtracting 1. So we're back to 3 here. Back to that moment in time. Not at 5. We're at 6. Okay? So let's forget the minus 1 word of operations. When I drop a 5, then I get 1. Square root of one is what I get. And if I want to get three, I triple. I drop an eight in. Eight minus four gets me the square root of four. If I don't want that, and I want three times that, I put a six in. Because that's what I went up. I went up six, right? I just changed that by going up one. So I hope you can see that the A term of a square root is rise over run square, square root of run. And if I went back, you would have seen that in the quadratic that we were doing, it's rise over the square root of run. Uh, square. <laughs> Cognitive decline continues. Okay. All right. But that's how functions work. And um, keep an eye out for that with all of your calculations. And maybe you'll get a little different perspective on things. Doesn't hurt to talk about it from different angles, whether they be supplementary or complementary. That that was a geometric joke that was flat. And then never mind. Carried away here. Got to get more sleep. All right. Let's see what that does. And yeah, sir, I I don't think my name should be in anywhere linked with the mathematicians you talk to there. Okay. I mean, obviously, we're talking a different level of beast there. All right. Anyway, thanks for the compliment, just to include my name there, but shouldn't be. All right, bye-bye.